to our first keynote. Let's connect to the United Kingdom. Alan Jackson is Helvar's chief evangelist with almost three decades of expertise in intelligent lighting and smart building evolution. He's joining us today to talk about something we can all look forward to, buildings of the future. It's important to dream, to imagine and plan for a better world for future generations. As we spend up to 90% of our time inside buildings, it would definitely make sense to imagine and plan for a world that includes better indoor environments. Now that you're all thinking, do I really spend 90% of my life indoors? You might start to realize that buildings of the future are really about you. Let's think about that for a moment. Buildings of the future are about you. And with that revelation, let's answer some questions. So how does the design of buildings and technology used in buildings affect us? Could a building be optimized to meet our individual needs as well as the needs of groups of people? Or can we have the best of both worlds, a perfect environment for us and me? If a building could be truly interactive, perfectly tuned to people's needs, could it support us with our tasks? And could it have an impact on our productivity and well-being? Can a building that utilizes the right technology impact how we feel? Could our common goal be for every building to be healthy, intelligent, cognitive, and sustainable? Imagine a sustainable building that continuously and autonomously adapts to changing conditions, learns, and even predicts human behavior. A building that uses no more energy than is absolutely necessary. A building that is truly interactive with the occupants. Imagine walking into that building where every piece of technology is interacting to help you unlock your full potential. A building where the systems are agile enough to react in real time to the environmental conditions and the needs of the occupants. Imagine a building designed to positively impact every individual's productivity, safety, health, and well-being. Imagine this, wherever you go in the building, it's adapting to your needs to provide a perfect environment to help you complete your tasks and to make your day better. Imagine a building that just makes you feel good. The evolution of buildings has often been driven by a specific need or maybe to solve a problem or sometimes just out of the desire to create something beautiful and lasting. The development of societies, the influence of industry and the progress of technology have all been factors in shaping the architecture that surrounds us. Recently, we've seen a shift away from individual buildings that were designed and built for just one purpose. You can think about a bakery, a clothes store, a cinema, or even a railway station. Today, these places can all be found within easy access, mixed use developments, along with many other services, including retail, office, even living spaces. We want an immersive experience all under one roof. I mentioned a moment ago that the evolution of buildings can be driven by a specific need. As we start to imagine life after COVID-19, these mixed use indoor spaces that we've become so accustomed to will need to adapt. COVID-19 is reshaping our world, including how we think about the design and use of indoor spaces. How are we going to provide safe spaces for people to return to and enjoy? We can turn to technology. Technology will help people find safe, healthy indoor spaces and then continuously monitor and optimize the environment around them to keep them safe. Technology has already made a difference in the way we use buildings. There are already buildings in existence that have some level of automation or intelligence. They may even learn about building usage and your behavior over time. They may even automatically adjust the indoor environment to meet your needs, but we can achieve so much more. Advancements in smart sensing, in software and data analytics means that we now have access to valuable data, which enables us to set up sustainable energy management strategies for buildings. 
These strategies can then adapt and be modified over the building's lifetime as its usage changes. Focusing on sustainability and the long-term possibilities of intelligence in buildings means asking questions, particularly at the design stage of buildings. Asking questions about how technology can be used to optimize the performance of a building over its entire lifetime. Asking these questions will inevitably result in conversations about energy saving and energy management, the health and well-being of occupants, environmental responsibility, and even the ability to attract and keep tenants, as well as the ability to attract and keep talent. As a result of prioritizing people and technology at the design stage of every building, we can eventually look forward to a time when all commercial buildings are designed to be continually optimized, well-being orientated, carbon neutral and energy positive. Choosing the right technology and building design will help secure a brighter future for generations to come. Don't make the mistake of thinking that the building of the future always needs to be a shiny new skyscraper using the latest building materials. Think about the building you're already in. The buildings we are using today may still be needed in 20, 30 or 40 years time. With the technology we have at our disposal today and the innovations we can already see emerging, it's possible to update the building you are currently using and bring it up to the specification of the most modern new build. The latest developments in wireless technology make it possible to update and future-proof almost any building. There's already a growing trend for wireless lighting solutions that use smart sensing and artificial intelligence to learn how indoor spaces are being used. Self-learning innovations can optimize the lighting and other building services in real time and can even predict how spaces are going to be used. This means that the building is always updating and optimizing itself and adapting to change over its entire lifetime. The building of the future could quite possibly be the building you're using right now. Our common vision of the future must be to have intelligent, autonomous buildings that have very little need for human interve in intervention. We're already on our way to achieving this through the use of artificial intelligence. Through the use of artificial intelligence, we can create intelligent and cognitive buildings that continuously monitor the environmental conditions, usage and behavior. Inputs from smart devices are collected and the data is analyzed to look for patterns and trends to build a picture of how the building is being used and how it's performing. And with enough data, we can continuously optimize the building and we can even start to predict future scenarios. These future scenarios and predictions will allow us to put in place energy management strategies to optimize energy consumption over the lifetime of the building. We will also be able to analyze equipment usage, failure patterns, so that we can put in place predictive maintenance programs to improve operational efficiency. Imagine the reduction in carbon footprint and cost savings that could be achieved in such a building. And let's not forget human interaction within the building. The buildings of the future will have mechanisms in place for humans to very simply interact with the building, allowing people to control their environment and give feedback about how the building is performing and how they feel. The more useful data that the building management system can gather, the better it will perform. If the building is to provide us with the perfect conditions based on our needs, it makes sense that we, the users, should be able to provide significant amounts of data to the building. We will interact with the building, most likely via mobile devices. I have a strong belief that in the future, all building designs will be people-centric. The interaction between technology and the occupants of buildings is absolutely key to providing the perfect indoor environment. And we cannot underestimate the impact that buildings have on the way we feel, our mood, our health, our productivity, and how we interact with others. Buildings really do have the power to make us feel engaged and inspired. If you walk into a building where people and well-being have been placed at the very center of its design, you will immediately see and feel the difference. One of the first things you will notice in the building is the natural lighting. This is because this building will have circadian lighting that's imitating natural light to match human circadian rhythms. 
which is far more natural and beneficial to our well-being. What you may not notice is that technology is playing a crucial role in making sure that the building services are centrally managed and working together to optimise every space within the building. By designing buildings where the services are connected and interacting with each other, we can ensure that all of the elements that affect your well-being and productivity, such as lighting, temperature, humidity and air quality, are optimised to provide perfect conditions. By placing people at the very core of building design, we focus on how technology can be used to positively impact our experience, safety, health and well-being. In 2020, the COVID-19 global pandemic changed the world. We've all been affected in some way, and here in 2021, we still find ourselves in challenging times, and our thoughts and prayers go out to everyone who's been affected by COVID-19. But there is light ahead, and we are adapting and innovating in response to new challenges. As we all plan to enter a post-pandemic world, we know that people want to return to workplaces and other buildings that are safe and healthy. We want more than ever to interact and collaborate. People and businesses make progress and grow through shared experiences and their ability to innovate, which is tough to do remotely. So we need to find new ways to come together for many reasons. Technology and building design can help us achieve that. Future innovations in building technology will radically alter the way people and buildings interact in ways that we cannot fully anticipate. But we don't have to wait. We already have intelligent lighting and smart building solutions that can make the return to work, school or other indoor environments a safe and healthy experience. And by starting to use this technology now, we take one step closer to our vision of future buildings. So how would I define buildings of the future? The building of the future is cognitive. It's constantly learning and adapting to the environment and the changing needs of people. The building of the future is intelligent. It will use artificial intelligence, data analytics and machine learning to optimise itself over its entire lifetime. The building of the future will learn every individual and every group's preferences and habits. The building will know what you want, when you want it. The building of the future is designed to be healthy and will have a measurable impact on how you feel, your health and your well-being. The building of the future is carbon neutral and energy positive. But most of all, the building of the future is all about you. It's designed to care for you. You will be at the very core of every action, every single decision that is made during the lifetime of that building. Together, we have a chance to shape buildings of the future, at least for the next hundred years. Thank you for listening. My name's Alan Jackson. And today, for the next few hours, we have more guest speakers who are going to be talking about intelligent cities, well-being and many, many other interesting subjects. So thank you for taking part. Thank you for listening and take care. Thank you, Alan. That was so insightful. It seems that buildings will definitely have a clear role in supporting the well-being of people. I can't wait for this to evolve and see this in action because this will definitely impact all of us in the near future. But right, now it's time for our second poll. So, in a building, what matters most to you? Option A, health and well-being. Option B, personal control of the space. Option C, carbon neutrality. Option D, automation and technology interaction, or option E, insights and predictions. And while you're answering, let me ask Alan a question. So Alan, hi. hi, thank you so much for your insights so far. But tell me, how do you think a lighting solution can best help in creating a people-centric experience in a space? Great, great question. Um, Intelligent lighting solutions can bring so many benefits to people. For example, I mentioned we're now able to emulate natural dynamic lighting in indoor environments. We can provide people with lighting experiences that are in tune with their natural circadian rhythms. 
And this really does have a positive impact on their health, their well-being and productivity. But also intelligent lighting solutions interact with the building and provide essential data to other building services such as climate control to ensure that the indoor environment is always optimized, whatever the task, whatever the person. And finally, I, I really do believe that in future building designs will be people centric. They'll be designed to be people centric and that intelligent lighting solutions that provide you and I with this natural dynamic lighting and will be optimized, always optimized, will be included in every building. Thanks, Alan. It's so interesting to hear about, about the natural relationship between human beings and, and lighting. OK. Let's get back to the results of our poll. And Ellen, I want to hear, what are your thoughts on the answers? Well, I, I think all the questions are very valid and, and all very interesting, actually. My, I hope people choose health and well-being. That's my personal favorite, but let's see. Here we go. Health and, health and well-being is, is the overall popular choice. So, Ellen, my final question to you. How do you see office spaces evolving due to the recent developments with COVID? Thanks, Amel. Um, COVID-19 has changed our lives in ways that we previously would not have found, it, uh, we'd have found unimaginable. And one area that will definitely change is the way we use offices, the way we return to work. In 2020, most of us, including me, have had to learn new ways of working, communicating and collaborating. But in some ways, it's, it's taught us to be more human. I mean, I've definitely noticed more time in online meetings being taken up with genuine care and concern for each other's health and well-being. More people asking, how are you? Um, and we, when we're able to meet face to face, I think, I really hope, we'll take these values into the workplace with us. And some changes we can expect to see as restrictions are lifted is that offices will be redesigned to include spaces that promote and enable collaboration and interaction, rather than just desks to sit at. We really miss this collaboration and interaction. It's the way we grow, it's the way we innovate. So that's going to become even more important and we'll value that a lot more. No touch technologies such as smart sensors and the use of personal devices would be more common to reduce the risk of infection and make people feel safer. I'm really happy to say that I've already spoken to many, many companies who are interested in how technology can be used to help them deliver healthier and safer workplaces for people to return to. I'm even happier to say that Helvar is here to help them make the right choices and will be here for the next 100 years at least. And finally, um, let me just say that I want to wish Helvar a very, very happy 100th birthday and say what a privilege it is for, for me personally to be part of this celebration. And I'm really, really looking forward to the other speakers and the rest of this event, so thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you so much for sharing your insights and it was a pleasure speaking with you. So, we just got some great insights into buildings of the future. And now we're gonna look at the future from another angle.